Welcome back. Eric, you had a chance to look at this. Um, we've been talking to a few other people for the last two minutes. Uh, where do you stand on the spore loop here? What do you think it's doing? Um, actually, I think it's a little off. Okay. I ran through it a bunch, and I kept getting that current was pointing to this one instead. Yep, that's correct. And I don't want it to be pointing that one. All right, so we need to fix that. Do you have a fix in mind, perhaps? Um, well, I need to go one less, so just one less, like that. Okay. Because that will one happen one less times. Okay. And here's an interesting point. That is admittedly an inelegant solution, right? But a lot of times it's valuable to let a student work with the solution they've got. They feel better about it if it's their work. And psychologically it's better not to be digging them all the time for minor things. You gotta make a judgment call. Sometimes uh, a solution is so inelegant that you might ask a student to rethink it and try a different way. This time, I'm gonna leave it as it is. It works, that's good enough, and so we move on. Okay. okay. Now, we've gotten to the point where current is pointing here, right? Yes. And we've got new node. Yes. So I want you to similarly do a careful walkthrough with me for these last two lines and show me what they're doing. Okay, well, current.next, so current's pointing to this node, and then dot .next, this thing right here, and it's, equal to new nodes. So I do this, I point that there, and then I say new nodes dot next, right here is currents next, so then I just point it to there, okay. and then I insert it into my list. Now, one of the things you find with pointers in particular is that people are a little sloppy about the reasoning, and in particular they don't drill right down on what is meant by each uh, expression, what box is indicated by each expression. So I'm going to try and reinforce that here, and that's a good general rule for pointers. Again, this whole bit about getting down to the concrete example with a visual image, right? Yeah. These each identify boxes, right? Yes. So what box is that one in the memory? Where is it in our diagram? That box. Okay, so there is new node dot next. Yes. Which one's current dot next? This box. Okay. And the arrows from them are a abstraction. They mean that this box contains that location. Yeah. And this box contains that location. Yes. So when I do an assignment, I'm going to be copying which box to which box? <coughs> You'd be copying this address into this box. Okay. So this one's new node dot next. Yes. Oh, and this one. Yeah, then you are be copying this box into this box. Right. Notice again, he had the, if the uh, assignment reversed there momentarily, I didn't say, oh, you have the assignment reversed. I instead just asked for clarification and as much as possible let him come up with a conclusion, oh, he got that in the wrong order. Okay. So now what we're saying is that we're copying, he said, from here to here, right? Yes. Okay. So if I copy what's in here to what's in here, what happens? What is that? Notice again, I didn't say, don't you think it should point to the same thing? I'm asking him to reason it out. This, well, I had this line in here, but this one went away when I did this. Yeah, and by the way, I made a mistake here in retrospect, and can't do every tutoring session perfectly. When he changed that line, I should have made him erase that one. And in general, people will make that mistake. They'll keep things standing that are actually gone. So I made a mistake here. Um, you, you're right. You changed this here, right? In that yeah. first one. I should have, we should have corrected this and gotten that out of there because it's not true anymore, right? Yeah, and since that one goes away, when I did this one, I got this? But that's pointing to me. Is that, and what do you think is, that pos this? is that possible? Yep, that is perfectly possible. That's exactly what's going on here. But then that one just goes away. Mm hmm Oh. So we got a problem here. Um, well, can I just go like, um, so, I can't lose that one. Yeah, you can. At this point, this is a fairly challenging thing for the student to sort out. And what we're going to do here is um, have a pause, and I'll say, well, <laughs> think about it. But before I do, I'm going to ask him to correct the diagram and put it back the way it was, so we're not baffled by the uh, wrong thing. Let's put it back where it was. Okay. And then I want you to play around with how to change that code. So that diagram does what it's supposed to do, rather than doing what we found was wrong. So after a pause, we come back. And uh, at that point, Eric, you've um, 
Well, what I came up with is I lost that node. So what I'm going to do here is make a temp node. It's current.next. So now I have a temp one pointing to here. And then I say current.next gets new node. So I do this. And this goes away. And then I do current.next gets temp. And then it goes like that. So this is an inelegant solution, but it's OK. Um, we're not going to make him do the two-step solution, the two-line solution that would be possible here. This is a good enough answer. And a student might have found it difficult to come up with this answer, in which case you're going to use a stair-step breakdown approach, similar to what's discussed in the web page. In this case, for instance, uh, appropriate stair-step if the student were blocked totally would be to say, well, you have a problem losing this node. Uh, is there a way we can solve it? Is there a way we can keep track of it? And you're giving them a hint to think about without actually saying, write a temp variable and point it to this node. This would be done after a few minutes. You've gone away and come back and found that they really are still blocked. So you don't just let someone pound their head at the thing over and over if they can't come up with it, but you at least give them a smaller challenge that is a step in the right direction, and they're still doing the work. And you walk away and come back if need be. There, we're almost there. You found three bugs in this code. There's one more to go. And what I want you to do now is walk through the code with a different assumption for index. Let's assume index is zero. Fill that in there. Zero. Yeah. Oh, well. So I want to put it at the beginning? Right. That would be the idea. OK. So let's clean up some of this. So we're back to the original starting case. Get some uh, extra detail on it. Right? Right? OK. Think through what's going to happen. And again, I'll be back in a minute or so here. But first, I want you to just reason out. And you should find there's something wrong. But I'll let you sort that out. So we pause. Come back. Um, I'm not sure. I, I keep putting stuff, but it goes. I've never put zero. I keep putting too far. But then when I fix it, I, I break the end. Okay. I tried switching this. I can't do that. OK. So you do see that we have a situation where if index is zero, then yeah. where is current going to be after the end of this for loop? Exactly. What it's is zero. One is greater than zero. It's going to be pointing to the beginning. Right. First node. Yeah, but I wanted to go kind of, and then it that goes four. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So think about how you might modify the code to do that. I'm still going to make him sweat a little on it here. He's just come up with the problem, but not necessarily a solution. So there's got to be something to handle this. It may involve some additional code. I'll give you that much. Additional code? Additional code. So we'll come back a few minutes later. So Eric, how you doing? Um, I'm, I'm still not sure. I just, I just don't know. Okay. Now, if the students made their honest best attempt to figure out the problem, as we said in the handout, we're going to stair-step it. We're going to give them a softer problem to solve that they are able to manage, yeah, even if that means giving a little bit of direct information. So Eric, the problem with this issue in a linked list is that there's no graceful way to solve it with the code using current. Because all this code assumes that you're putting it after a note, right? Yeah. But in the case where you're putting it at the beginning of the list, you're not putting it after a note. Mm -hmm. And different code is needed in that case. So what I want you to do is not try to make this keep working, because it won't. Uh, no one can do that. Instead, you're going to need to add some additional code. I suggest maybe up here. Uh -huh. That will, or actually, let's see. Now you can do it down here as well. That will handle this other situation where the index is 0 completely separately. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, let's break that down in further steps, because uh, this is a, a challenging thing about language lists mm -hmm. to do this. Write me code assuming that you are putting it at the beginning of the list. Don't worry about current, don't worry about anything else necessarily. Just write me code to insert new node at the beginning of the list. It's a separate thing down here. Um, okay. Current at the beginning, okay. New it's node at the beginning of the list. The beginning, oh, new, new node at the beginning of the list. At the beginning. Then I want you to use current. Okay. So I'm blocking off a possible bad approach. But I'm not giving him an answer either. He's got to think it through. Now he's got a challenge to do the new node at the beginning of the list. 
without using current at all. Okay. But can you use current? I don't want to walk away, right? You know, I'll come back after five minutes. Well, if I, if I have to put current at the beginning, let's go back. Um, if I have to put current at the beginning, then I suppose I have to use net. Yep. So what I'll do so you already exist, then you don't need contact. Okay, I think I got it. So I have to make it like this. So, and by the way, I probably should have done that if necessary. Had him draw the arrows that need to be changed, so that then he can go and look at what arrows he needs to modify and get assignment statements from those. Our apologies for background noise, by the way. We're doing this in a live classroom just to add extra reality to it. Um, then I guess I can do no Oh, it gets. No. Move head to be new node because I move. I added something else at the beginning. Okay, it's close. Now, at this point, why don't you pause and say to yourself, what would you be doing to help the student out? Same principles before. First, be sure you see the problem, and then how are you going to ask them to solve that without giving them a direct answer? If you come back from a pause on that, what you probably would come up with it, given all we've done, is make them draw some diagrams, right? So and drill down on exactly what boxes are involved. So Eric, I want you to um, look at this line here. Mm -hmm. And like we did before, I want you to tell me what the boxes are. What box is that? What box is that? Let's point to them right there. Okay, new new dot next. And by the way, we need to change this back the way it was before so we can talk about it. Oh, okay, for the Okay. And new node dot next is this box right here. And head dot next. It's this box. Okay. And then the assignment. We'll copy which box to which? So we're copying. Oh, we're copying this box to this. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. And that go that makes it go like that, huh? Yeah. So we need to fix that line. I can just thanks to this. Yep. And then it points. This one points to what is in here because this is the box. So it's like that. Okay. And then uh, finish down with the next one. And head gets you know that means I just this box. What's in that box? So like that. Good. That then. Handles the case where you're heading to the beginning of the list. Yeah. You've already got a case where you're handling the other situations. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is wire these together into one piece of code. And again, I'm going to walk away. Eric, think about it for a little bit. I'll come back. See That's simple. Do. I'm a 102 student, so I know that I can. Um, index is not zero from not at the beginning. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do all that, and otherwise, I'm going to do that. Okay. And so I come back. Eric has embraced this with an if else. That's a working solution. It's an inelegant solution. There are probably clear ones. That's fine. He's got a good answer. I suppose if he seemed enthusiastic enough, I might ask him to try and refine it a bit. That's not required. As long as the student's got a good comprehension, you're done. So, why don't you try running it? It should be working. Oh, it works. Yes. Thank you, tutor. Come back anytime.